Hey guys, this is Tina Willis. I am a Florida personal injury lawyer, as many of you already know. What I've decided to do is try, I'm trying to do a series of videos anytime I see something in the news that is safety related that I think people really should know about and would care about. And, and here's the thing, I, get, I read the news daily uh, on specifically targeted safety related issues. My husband said, you should have been a safety expert or something <laughs> in a different life because I'm just pretty obsessed with safety. Ever since I became a, a personal injury lawyer, I'm just so aware of all of the things in our lives that could injure or even kill us. So please subscribe if you want to be kept in the loop on sa safety related issues. But today what I'm going to talk about are coronavirus supplements. So if you're like me, when the coronavirus first came around, I was super nervous about catching this virus and not just because of the, the risk of death, but also because of the risk of permanent disability. And I'm, in addition to being kind of a safety freak, I'm very into health and fitness. I'm a long distance runner. And for my entire life, really, I have been a very dedicated to fitness and nutrition. So I work out six days a week. I, my husband and I eat probably 10 servings of fruits and vegetables daily. And, you know, we're really careful with our health. So what caught my eye today was a, a news report that I read in, 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 by NPR talking about coronavirus supplements. And I'm gonna to have to go ahead and admit here that occasionally I take supplements, even though I know they are not regulated by the FDA. And I just kind of bury my head in the sand about what I know are, are the actual risks. I mean, well, that's not entirely true. I am pretty careful about getting a feel that the company is safe. Like for example, I purchased vitamins from a company that includes independent uh, or results from independent labs, verifying the, I should say the content of the pill. So like, for example, I take vitamin D and the company I buy supplements from has this certification, but to be honest, I really don't even know. I mean, I trust that more just as a consumer, but I don't actually know that it, it, you know how legit that is. But that's just my personal threshold. Yours could be different. I mean, you're, you're trusting as much as I am. The, the problem is that we need more regulation and the FDA does not regulate supplements. So um, the reason I have my phone in my hand is because before I started this video, I did a little search, um, I opened up my Amazon app and did a search for coronavirus supplements. So an, an important thing to know is these, the companies that sell on Amazon are mostly third party sellers. They are not, uh, I mean, so Amazon sells some products themselves, but many of them are, are third party sellers. So this could literally be someone from their garage. It could be someone from a different country that even has, you know, fewer regulations, all that's hard to imagine because the United States does not regulate supplements. So this reporting from NPR was that they found over a hundred supplements on Amazon that actually made unsubstantiated claims that they could prevent or treat viruses. And NPR notified Amazon, and then it, it took Amazon about 20 days to remove those lists of products. And then another set of products went, went live. And as of July 27th, the date of the Amazon or the NPR reporting, those additional products hadn't been taken down. So that's, and that actually included one company that had been sued by the Department of Justice for fraud. Uh, related to COVID-19 um, claims. So you really have to do your homework and be careful when you're purchasing supplements from anywhere, but definitely, you know, be aware that at least as according to the NPR reporting, Amazon is not carefully 
um, reg, you know, monitoring what they're selling on their platform. And really the bigger problem is the FDA doesn't regulate these supplements. And to me, this is just another example of something that I've, I've mentioned quite a bit, it, it, just in people, to people in my life, especially my husband, but to anyone else who will listen, that it is, people just do not understand how much we actually need regulations in this country to stay safe and how few regulations we really have for safety and how those are being attacked by lawmakers um, and pushed, you know, the, the lack of regulation being pushed by companies because they just want to make money. They want to make money and they don't care about your safety. And so we, I feel like as consumers, we just really need to be on alert about this and we need to fight for more regulations. And the FDA in this situation with supplements is just one example. But here's what you need to know, it's so important. Supplement manufacturers are not required to provide any evidence, any evidence at all, not just about the effectiveness, they don't have to prove effectiveness to the FDA, but they also do not even have to prove safety. So, you know, you're on your own, totally. If a company just wants to make money or not even a company, just a random person, wants to make money, they can put together a pill, <laughs> then they can, they can sell those products and they never had to prove they were safe. So you just really have to have your guard up. I say be skeptical. I am the ultimate skeptic. I was probably already a skeptic before I came a, became a lawyer, but after seeing a, a number, you know, a lot of people who were injured or killed through all kinds of safety related hazards. Um, I just, I, in my own personal life, I am extremely cautious and skeptical. And I think that's kind of rubbed off onto my husband too. And that is just how we, you know, we're very protective and, and cautious and guarded when we're, when we're shopping, but you know, we're, we're human too. Um, we take risks and we, you know, we buy products hoping that they will help and trusting companies. And again, I think that's why we need government regulation because it is kind of impossible as a consumer to, to control everything that affects safety in your life. One interesting thing along those lines is that last year, the Wall Street Journal reported that there were over a thousand products on Amazon that the federal government had found to be unsafe. And actually Amazon reached a settlement of a $1.2 million settlement with the EPA for selling illegal pesticides. So that's just an example. You know, you, you, you can be totally unaware of unsafe products that you're purchasing, not just from Amazon, but from any company and you know it would really be nice if the government were looking out for us and regulating these products and and the fact is they just aren't doing it uh, in, on anywhere near the scale that they should now i just want to say in wrapping up that um, my firm does not sue for I, I am a personal injury lawyer for the most part we would not take a claim if someone were injured from taking a supplement so please don't don't, I, I can't help you and, and please don't call about that. This is more of a public service video. Now we could, we might look close, more closely at a case if someone were seriously injured or killed as a result, you know, they, they like died after taking a supplement. But the problem in cases like that is it would be very difficult to prove how, the cause of their death. But if there was good evidence in that way, and, and don't take my word for that, you should contact someone who handles, you know, look up product liability type, type lawyers and get their opinion. I'm not giving a legal opinion that there's no case because there could be, but that's just not the type of case we normally would handle. Again, just a public service announcement here. And last thing is, I, again, I do regularly read the news for safety related issues. As in, I get updates as a lawyer on these issues that are happening in the law, in the news. 
And I'm really trying to share those. And the reason is because not only because we need more regulations, but because we need to vote uh, in a way that, <laughs> that recognizes that corporations are paying lawmakers to not have these regulations in place. And, you know, your politics can be whatever they, you know, you want them to be. But the, the fact is that our safety is, you know, regularly affected by how lawmakers vote or, or laws they don't pass, laws they should pass in, in just so many ways. And if you subscribe, you will learn more what you will become more aware of the safety issues that you know laws that really should be passed and we need to vote in such a way that will get those laws passed or if nothing else at least when you are purchasing products you will be more aware or services or or all of the different things i'm going to talk about over time related to safety you'll be more aware of where you really do need to be sort of think like a lawyer, an injury lawyer, and be more skeptical rather than just trusting whatever these companies have to say, because dude, they just want to make money. They do not care about your safety. And in too many cases, they aren't required to care about your safety. So please go ahead and subscribe. If you found value from this video, I'd appreciate if you would hit like. And in the comments, I'd really like to know, have you started taking any coronavirus supplements? What did you do to make sure that they were safe, if anything? Where did you buy them? And do you have any other safety related questions? I may not be able to have the answer right off the top of my head, but at least it'll give me ideas for what people are interested in for future videos. So until next time, please stay safe, healthy, and happy. I'll talk to you later.